So again, Second Chronicles, let me go there real quick. I had something in it, and then I pulled it out because, well, that's what I did. But I want to go to Second Chronicles 25, and I know that's in here somewhere. Let me just find it here. Well, anyways, I know it's in here somewhere. I keep losing books of the Bible. All right, let me go here first, and then I'll go backwards. Oh. Yeah, I'll find it. Right there, boom. No, that's not it either. Wow, I got, I got, I got this. I've got my. Uh, oh, there it is. I do have my Bible today. There it is. All right. I just had to find it. Kings Chronicles and then Ezra. All right. First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. I'll just flip it right open to it. So Second Chronicles twenty-five. All right, is this. Amaziah um, became king when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jeho- Jehoadam. Hohadam. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. Not wholeheartedly. I've spoken about this hundreds of times. Are we going to receive the Lord in the fullness of our heart, or are we just going to take the bits and pieces and apply that to our lives? See, And then we have, we have a, an incomplete retrospect of what God's Word says and does. Because again, everybody wants to retranslate God's Word to fit their lifestyle, their agenda, their desires. And that's what people do today. Because nobody wants to live by the truth. If we, if we were told we have to, and I can't wait to get up in heaven. Because I get to introduce the church. I can't wait for God to say, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. That's not what my word says. My word says this. See, whenever anybody has to come and argue the word with me, I know they don't believe the, God, the word of God. It's written right here. It's written right here. Every week after I do a message, I get texts, I get phone calls, I get all this stuff. Well, Pastor Mark, when you read that scripture, are you sure it meant that? Well, let's go back and look in the Greek and look at the original language. Because, see, people don't think I study. I go back to the original. I break it down word for word. Explanation for explanation, and then I go, and again, using exegesin, exegesin, break down everything about it. Break down the culture, break down the time, break down this. So when I come here, it's what the word means. All right? I know probably about 200 other pastors that do the same thing. They break it down. See? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Unless you are hearing through this, and the enemy is placating something through his mouth, because again, and you're listening to it with your physical ear rather than your spiritual ear, and you're not letting God bring it into the depth and the core and the center of your heart, then you're getting a different message. All right? Again, Write the verse down, go home, and break it down the exact way I just said I do. See? And then you'll find that the meaning is correct. All right, so he, here we are. Amaziah with, a, with a, a piece of his heart given to God. A piece. Not the whole heart. All right, so again... He did what was right in the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. As soon as the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed his servants who had killed his father, the king. However, he did not put their children to death, because as it is written in law in the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, fathers are not to die because of children, and children are not to die because of fathers, 
but each will die for his own sin. That's, that's a brilliant statement. It means that you are held accountable for your own actions. If we look back on all the kings, every single king was held accountable for his own actions. We also have learned in this series that God can use people that may not be all on board for his purpose, and then he's done with them. Because of what? Because they made a decision to live in sin. They made a decision to live in an apostasy against him. And Amaziah was no different. As a matter of fact, Amaziah mocked God. He mocked God. And let me tell you what. People that mock God and God's plan sometimes drop right where they stand. We've seen it. This one guy talking against Israel, all of a sudden, boop, hits the floor. Dead. God will not be mocked. God will not be made light of. And the punishment may not come today, but it's coming. The discipline is coming. And then if people don't learn by discipline, the wrath is coming. All right? And so, again, as we, as we lay the kings of the Old Testament over today, we see a lot of similarities. A lot of similarities in today as in yesterday. And again, we go back and we say, if my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and repent of their sins, then I will heal their lands. Paraphrased. I don't know how much plainer it can get, but I will tell you this. If we lived in any of the kingdoms of the past, which, I hate to say it, we're replicating kingdoms of the past, if all over the world, all over the world, then there's going to be a day where the Lord is going to say, I'm done. I'm done. See? And as we find out coming up shortly, we're going to find out that God becomes done with Israel. And the kingship of Israel is no longer in play, just Judah. But we're going to talk about Amaziah right now. With that being said, I want to look at two words this morning. The first is the word singleness. All right, now singleness in the Greek and the Hebrew definition is the same. It is the word hapalades. And a hapalade means in a simplistic way, in absolute sincerity, in purity, purity as well as graciousness. God tells us, or God's word tells us to be single-minded. Don't be dual-minded. In other words, Amaziah was dual-minded. One side of his mind was over here, and the other side of his mind was over here. When you're lukewarm and you're sitting in the middle fence, I don't know how many of you have ever fell climbing over a barbed wire fence, but it is not fun. It's not fun. All right? I can remember living in Amherst, New Hampshire, and I remember the field down at Sally's, and, and you know, we, we were told never to go in the field when the bulls were there because the bulls didn't like people and we had to run. But one day we decided we were just going to, there was a shortcut to get to my friend Jay's house. So we'd climb over the fence and go in, and one day I slipped and went down on that barbed wire, and it was like, oh, mama, this is not a fun thing. You know, and then you're trying to get off. And now your pants are stuck, and now you're ripping your pants. And the first thing I'm thinking, my mother's going to ask me how I just ripped these pants. What am I going to tell her? Oh, well, I went where I was and supposed to be, because I did that a lot. See? And so God doesn't want us sitting on the fence, hot or cold, he says. Don't be single-minded, be single, -minded, be single -minded, focused on one thing, but be focused on that one thing. Don't have a dual mentality with the world and with this. And how many believers think, well, I'm great right here. I'm neither hot nor cold. 
God will love half of me and God will love, won't love the other half of me, so I'm good. So I'm good. But the Bible says, if you're lukewarm, what does he do? Spit you out. You, get into the, you go into the divine spittoon. We cannot play with the word of God. It's a simplistic way in absolute sincerity and purity, as well as graciousness. As well as graciousness. It's the grace of God that has given us all the information to make a choice. We can choose. If not, we'll be spewed. That's the way it is. That's single-mindedness. Amaziah was not single-minded. And because of not being single-minded, well, when God again sent the prophets to say, what are you doing? He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. As a matter of fact, we're going to find out, he, in his arrogance, he started to mock them. He started to ignore them. He started to speak over them. It was really kind of interesting. Because you know what? It happens today. There's always somebody that's got something to say about a message that God brings that maybe, if they applied it to their lives, would bring about an amazing change. But no, no. I enjoy living lukewarm because I know what God's going to do with me if I'm lukewarm. See? He's going to be all right with half of me. Half is better than nothing. Matter of fact, the word of God says he wants your whole heart, whole heart. Let's keep going. So there's no complexity that we find in serving God. If it's complex, then it's because you've made it complex. It's very easy. It's the easiest thing to do. It's very simple. Whole heart, whole mind, whole soul. Whole whole heart, whole mind, whole soul. I can't get any easier than that. I receive Christ, I give him my whole heart. And in giving him my whole heart, I give him my whole soul. And as my heart and soul meld with him, then my mind begins to follow. Then my mind begins to follow. And as my mind begins to follow, then now I'm aligned with the cross. And watch what God does. Watch what God does. He does something amazing. It's like, you know what? Yesterday was an amazing day. I can't even begin to put into retrospect the rewards that were given because of the things we did yesterday. And, and just, uh, again, unashamedly, on anything. We just did it. Now, you know, somebody said, oh, well, Pastor Mark was only six or seven kids. You just lost your rewards. You've just lost your rewards. Why would you rob yourself of amazing things from God? See? Why? I, <laughs> it's so interesting because last night we had this one family that I picked up at the wedding, the two young kids. And why people take little kids to weddings, I'll never understand. And keep them out at late night. And so we're driving back on the bus, and I've got an older couple, and they're like, well, you know, we're, our hotel is over here. And I said, well, I'm only supposed to go to one spot. And so I pulled around the corner as close as I could to their hotel, and they got out and they walked up. The family that was on the bus, I go, where are you guys standing? Are you here at this hotel? They go, no, we're on Exchange Street. And I go, oh, okay, I know where Exchange Street is. I've got to go right by it. I'll drop you off. So I, I, I dropped them off in exchange, actually at the bottom of Market Street. Um, yeah, it was Market Street. And uh, it's kind of interesting because he said, were you going to do this? I said, no. I said, but you have a little girl. She's coughing. And I said, where on Exchange Street are you staying? They said, 10 Exchange Street. Well, 10 Exchange Street used to be where my old apartment was. I said, where are you? She said, second floor. I go, oh. I said, second floor overlooking the street? Yeah. I said, that was my old apartment. I said, that's interesting. So they were going to stay there. So I took them there. I could have been, well, an unnice person and said, nope, you got to get off here at the AC Hotel and then you got to walk five blocks. But no, it was there. 
faith. Why? Whole heart, whole mind, whole soul. Servant. Servant. Be the light. Be the light. He goes, I don't have a whole lot of money to tip you. He goes, I got, I got a bunch of dollar bills. And I said, dollar bills work. That's okay. Just throw, throw them in the bucket. You know, that's it. But you know what? We can't be the light <laughs> if we have one of those lamps that you click three times and keep it on the lowest setting. Thing. We can't be the light. We're a dull bulb. Why? Because we haven't given it all of the juice of God. We've just clicked it once. Well, I'll just live here. This is a great place to live. So again, whole heart, whole mind, whole soul. Again, it's the origin word is haplios, and it means single, simple, sound, and perfect. I love that. Single minded, simple, heart, mind, and soul. All right. Sound, I'm standing on the, the rock of Christ. I'm standing on the foundation of God's word. And perfect. Why? Because God's plan is perfect for me. That's what it is. That's how simple it is. Why deviate from something that was created before the foundation of the earth that is so perfect for us as individuals? Receive, repent, receive, believe, walk by faith, live in a transformed life. Again, single-minded, not double-minded. Single, simple, sound, and perfect. Again, haplios means being singular in thought without distraction. Without distraction. The world wants to question God's the world wants to question God's word so much because they want to deny its existence and deny that it's factual. That's why you don't hear about all the stuff going on over in the Middle East and the things they're finding in Israel. They don't want you to know that because that proves God is real. So you'll never see that on any news station. But if you are connected to people in Israel, you hear about this constantly. Constantly. Not those fake people that get up there and say they're the prophets. Not those people that get up there and, oh. No, the ones that are actually on the ground with a shovel digging up the artifacts. Saying, ha. Oh, Wait till they hear this, and then whew, radio silence. See? Why? Because it proves God's real. It proves God's real. Oh, we can't, we can't accept the realness of God, because if we do, oh, that means I'm wrong. Means singular in thought and without distraction. Single minded, not double minded. Brings us to this remembering that God's word is sound. And in its soundness, it is perfect for the time we are in. It is perfect. Verse 5 Then Amaziah gathered Judah and assembled them according to ancestral families according to commanders of thousands and according to commanders of hundreds, he numbered those 20 years old or more for all Judah and Benjamin. He found there to be 300,000 fit young men who could serve in the army bearing spear and shield. Then for 7,500 pounds of silver, he hired 100,000 valiant warriors from Israel. The word today would be mercenaries. He hired mercenaries. For 7,500 pounds of silver. However, however, again, here it comes. A man of God came to him and said, King, do not let Israel's army go with you. Israel was in bad shape at that point in time. It, it was all over the place. And so God sends a prophet Somebody say, you know, this might not be a good idea. See? Don't let them go in with you. Verse 
For the Lord is not with Israel. There it is. For the Lord is not with Israel. You know, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes we'll, we'll believe somebody because they're wearing a big 40-pound cross on their chest. Or we believe because, well, they go to church. It doesn't make them right with God. It doesn't make them right with God. Again, the, the proof is in the fruit. Just because you got a 40-pound cross on your chest and you got Jesus stickers all over your car doesn't mean you're right with God. Israel was not right with God because their thought wasn't right. They weren't singularly minded. They weren't living in a sound example of the, of the doctrine of God. And they refused to, to accept God's perfect plan for them. And we've seen it. I mean, Israel was pretty screwed up. You know, they were a mess. But it was like, oh, they're God's chosen people. Oh, they're, oh, they're, you know, David. Oh. David was accountable for his sin. All the other kings were accountable for their sin. The people in Israel were accountable for their sin. If the people of Israel today do not figure out that Jesus is the Messiah, their Savior, then they will be held accountable for their sin. Just because they're Jewish doesn't mean they get a free pass. For the Lord is not with Israel, all the Ephraimites... But if you go with them, do it. Be strong for battle, but God will make you stumble before the enemy. For God has the power to help or to make one stumble. You hear that? God has the power to help or to make one stumble. If my people who are called by my name repent and, and call upon my name and confess their sins I will heal their land I've said that I think in every single service in the last two months do you think that might be important I, I think it's very important I think it's insanely important Again, God has the power to help or to make one stumble. What are you going to call on him to do? Then Amaziah said to the man of God, What should I do about the 7,500 pounds of silver I gave to Israel's division? The man of God replied, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. You know, the word of God is pretty, pretty pointed on what we give. And as a matter of fact, he even says to test him at it. And this isn't an offering message. But if we literally, if we literally took those words into play. Here, here Amaziah is, has given them 7,500 pounds of silver. It's worth so much money back. And God says, don't worry about that. Because I can give you so much more. I can give you so much more. Some people are going, oh, well, my, my, my checkbook is empty, Pastor Mark. He doesn't say where. He just says he can give you so much more. See? He can give you so much more. You know what, last night... <laughs> We're out here with a trailer with seven bales of hay. Hey, this is the classic. We were supposed to have six bales of hay. We had seven. Huh. Why that? Because that's God's perfect number. That's God's perfect plan. And all seven bales of hay fit in that trailer perfect. So everybody had a place to sit. 11th hour and 59th minute, Crystal's going, we're not going to have the hay. We're not going to be able to do the hay, right? And then all of a sudden, this call comes in. Hi, Pastor Mark. This is Linda. 
I said, hi, Linda, how you doing? You still need that hay? Yes, I do. See? So we run over and get the hay. Then we come back here. We get everything hooked up. We didn't know if the ball was going to be right on the hitch. So my son's running back and forth with the four-wheel trying, and then he just says, I'm done. I'm leaving it here. I go, bring it back to the church. I'll make it work. Crystal goes, you know your father can get, it, get whatever he needs to do, get done, he'll get done. And so all of a sudden, it's back over here. I put the trailer up. I look at the ball. Yeah, it's two inches. Next thing you know, we put it on. Bam, it's on there now. And it fits, and it locks up. And off we go, down through the woods. Everybody's kidney getting jostled around and stuff. But big smiles, oh, ha, oh, oh. Those are the rewards for me. Those are the rewards. The joy that comes from a sacrificial heart, that's the rewards. See? That's the rewards. That's rewards. The sound of a small voice. The man of God replied, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah released the division that came to him from Ephraim to go home, but they got very angry with Judah and returned home in a fierce, fierce rage. They didn't like what was happening. They didn't like that God directed him not to do this. See, how many times have we got to this place where we don't like what God's saying, so we go into a fierce rage against God? Because it's not against a person. It's against God. We don't like what God said. We don't like what God wanted us to do. We don't, we don't like the fact that God said, no, nope, this isn't right based upon the fact that maybe we're not right. See? Again, look in a mirror. Look in a mirror. Because sometimes we're the problem, not everybody else. See? The next word I want to look for or at is the word integrity. The word for the word integrity is tuma meaning integrity. The origin word is tamam, which means complete as well as finished. Complete as well as finished comes from the fullness of God. In the fullness of God, we think integral with the word of God in a single-minded action. We, don't, we, aren't, we aren't living in duality, living in a single-minded, integral way. It also means finished. We've come to the fact that we understand the finished work of Jesus Christ, which means he went to the cross, he's taken it all, he's paid for it all. We just now need to live in the fullness of what he's done. See? It as well means completed, and I love this, because... An apple tree can't grow apples unless it blossoms first. And so it also means to blossom. So here we are. We're brand new in the Word of God, and we've, we're single-minded. We're complete. We're full. we got everything going on right. And we begin to blossom because we know that blossom is going to bring next the fruit. I got this fig tree. Actually, it's Crystal's fig tree. It's a freaky fig tree. It won't blossom. It, it keeps growing. But it won't blossom. And all I said was, okay, Lord, maybe this is lined up with the same fig tree you got in Israel that ain't blossoming yet. Because ain't no fig growing on this tree. We just keep looking at it. It's funky. It's weird. It does its own thing. All the leaves fall off, and then it grows another limb, grows another leaf, and then it does the same thing again. No figs. Maybe it's not time. Maybe God's waiting. I don't know. All I know is this stupid fig tree will not blossom. Are you an unblossoming fig tree? 
Why? Not rooted right. Maybe it's not rooted right. We'll have to check that out later on. Not rooted right. See? Not single, singularly minded. Not living upon the sound and foundation of the word of God. Now, you know, it's kind of interesting. I, 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 I go back to way back when, when I was a, a kid, and I was sitting in, in service. It's 930. Believe me, when, when I went to church, and, and, and they were on a roll, sometimes they went till 10, 1030. And you were just sitting there going. But I, but I remember that the pastor was so in tune to what the Lord was giving him. He was singly lined up and minded, and he was going. And every single thing that he said has come true today. See? He wasn't a prophet. He was preaching. He was teaching God's word. And, and I know this pastor, and he would study for hours and hours, late into the night, little sleep, study, 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 study. Why? He wanted to get it right. He wanted to get it right. And you know what happened? In his getting it right, people got mad. People got mad because they didn't want to hear that they might have to alter their path to become single-minded. Amazah strengthened his position and led his people to the Salt Valley. He struck down 10,000 Sierrites, and the Judahites captured 10,000 alive. They took them to the top of a cliff where they threw them off, and all of them were dashed to pieces. As for the men of the division that Amaziah sent back, so they would not go with him into battle, they raided the cities of Judah from Samaria to Beth Aaron. This is how mad they were. They began to raid the cities. Struck down 3,000 of their people and took a great deal of plunder. Don't hire a mercenary to do the work of God because you're going to end up getting bit right in the seat. It's funny how we try to find another way. We try to find a shortcut. I'll never forget the day a young lady said, I'm looking for the shortcut to God. I said, there is no shortcut. Oh, I'll find one. Hasn't found one yet. Not happening. It's not happening. There is no shortcut to God. There's no shortcut to accountability. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, period. There's a big period on that. That word for integrity also means to end a self mindset. It also means spent. I love that, spent. It means I'm done trying to establish another route to get to the cross. I'm spent. There is no other way. And so in that no other way comes, oh, ready for this word? Submission. Submission. And submission brings obedience. Now, there was something interesting that was said about Amaziah. He did, he did that which was right in the sight of Yahweh. We said that, but not with a perfect heart. What does this mean? He was mo mediocre. And in, in his mediocre, mediocrity, his true nature was not expressed in mediocrity. But then, all of a sudden, he manifested the flesh. And in the flesh... He was rash, arrogant, and expressed amazing infidelity. True colors come out. Now today, we see that same mediocrity in revealing God's word. I, oh, I don't want to upset them. I don't, oh, well, I, don't, I don't want them to not come and put their money in the offering. Again, I've said, God's going to take care of everything. 
He always does. That's faith. I'm going to let God do what God's going to do to get what he's got to get done. And, you know, again, this November, right now, well, yeah, no, next month. November is our anniversary for this church. Actually, we moved out of the marketplace just before Halloween, a week before Halloween. So we're actually at the place of anniversary right now. You better not die on me. And that's just the way it is. See? It's, it's one of those things where we just go, hey, you know what? Thank you, Lord. Because, again, five years ago, we were told by a, a group of people, you won't be here. Well, I didn't know you were the director of God's plan. Because God's always going to take care of us. He hasn't told me we're done. And considering he told me when it was time to leave the fire barn and go to the marketplace, and then when he told me it was time to leave the marketplace and come here. He hasn't told me we're supposed to shut the doors yet. And I know that they can't understand why the Deeper Well Church is still the Deeper Well Church. And I know they drive by here all the time. Probably going, I can't believe it. I was wrong. Or pride and arrogance comes in and says, well, they must not... So again, he became rash, arrogant, and expressed infidelity. And again, we see mediocre, mediocrity in revealing God's word. What happens when we do not live in the soundness of the word God? Come on now. What happens when we live, we do not live in the soundness of the word of God? There's going to come a test. There's going to come a test. And people aren't going to like to test. We've, we've watched, and I can say this in all truthfulness, I've watched more tests in this church than I've ever seen in any other church before. That's just honestly. And, and it's because God says, okay, you want to be this. Let's see if you're true. Let's see if it's real. Because he wants to know, the Lord wants to know how firm you are in your heart with his word. The Bible tells us trouble's a certainty, misery is an option, there's going to be trouble, we're going to be tested, Test, tests build faith, hopefully, and a test when it builds faith, what, what does that do? Brings us to the next place, prospers us for the next part of the mission, or the next part of what's going on. After a Mosaic came from the attack on the Edomites, he brought the gods of, he brought the gods of, now listen, little G, brought the gods of the Seerites and set them up as his gods. Uh-oh. He worshiped before them and burned incense to them. So the Lord's anger now was against him. Well, God's all right with what I do. He knows. I'm a bobblehead. No, he's not happy. He's not happy. Oh, well, I'll just live in the grace of God. And he'll get over it. No. We, we've got to be single-minded. Why? <laughs> Why would you bring back the gods of another country into your place so that you could worship him. Did you not see everything that has happened to every other king that did the same stupid thing? See? Did you not see it? It, it boggles my mind when, when we see faith in action and we see God, because of faith, deliver on something, and then we lose faith and go, well, I don't know if he's going to do that again. Why not? He's the same God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's still going to do the same thing he does, unless you're being stupid and offering and asking for stuff in greed. 
Otherwise than that, he's going to say, trust me, trust me. So all of a sudden, you know what? We don't have hay. What are we going to do? I say, four benches down in the basement, I'll screw them to the deck of the, the trailer. Bzz, bzz, bzz. My phone's buzzing. Hello? Hi, Pastor Mark. Is this Pastor Mark? I said, yes, it is. This is Linda. Do you still need that hay? Yes, I do. When do you need it? I said, this afternoon. Well, I said, I'll be over in 20 minutes. It is now uh, 11.55. It was 11.55 when she called, because I went back on my phone, and I said, you are the 11th minute and 50, 11th hour and 55 minute God. Now, I had put I need hay. Uh, oh, on Facebook, I'm looking to borrow six bales of hay for a hay ride, and I will return them the next day. Every single person that answered Facebook said, oh, buy it from this one, buy it from this one, buy it. I said, I don't want to buy the hay. I want to borrow the hay. Now, the funny thing is most of the people that were telling me to go buy the hay were from Texas, was from all the southern states in the country. I'm going, I'm in Maine. Stephen Betters, call this guy. I go, Stephen, you remember I'm in Maine, right? And this guy was in Maine, but I couldn't get a hold of him. Now, here's the funny thing. 20-something years ago, 10, 15, 15 years ago, we had the House of David West. It was in Standish. We had a surfing sign out front on 25 in Standish. And, and it was a big farmhouse. And we had a huge garden. And we had a huge barn. And we, we had a, a fall, we had a fall, no. We had a harvest party. I'm trying to remember what the name. It was a harvest party. And we did a barn dance. And, and this this woman, Linda, who was a friend of mine's aunt, came out and helped us with it and brought us hay then, too. I had forgotten her. Same, same hay. She preserved it for us so we could have it again. But it was, and that was free hay, too, yeah. And that was interesting. Now, kind of interesting because we advertised it as a harvest dance, and we had all these people show up thinking that they could bring in their alcohol. And when they showed up, I said, we don't let alcohol in it. Well, isn't this a barn dance? I go, yeah, but it's not, you know, country jamboree barn dance. It's, it's a barn dance for the community just to come and enjoy a good time. And it was kind of interesting because they go, are you sure? I go, absolutely. So they went back to the car, put all their alcohol away, came back in, and then before they left, they said, this is the best time we've ever had without alcohol. I said, yeah. I said, it's funny what, how you see things when your head isn't clouded with ridiculousness. See? Today, how, how clouded is, are our heads with the ridiculousness that's swirling around us? See? Everybody's like, oh, I'm on edge, I'm on edge. The spiritual battle's coming closer. It's really close. And if you're not grounded in single-mindedness, you can get sucked up. Gone. That's it. Sayonara. I love the movie Twister. It's the suck zone. It sucks you right up. In the Twister, the Senator Twister. You're going to get stuck in it. And, and you know what? Every single one of these kings got all sucked up into the spiritual battle. Because... They didn't understand that the battle isn't against flesh and blood. It's against the prince and the spiritual, and the, it's against the principalities and powers of darkness. It's not, it's not somebody who might have a different thought process than somebody else, or somebody that might think something else. That's between them and God. That's between them and God. And I'm sure when they get wherever they're going to go, God's going to Say, hey, here it is. It's what he does. It's what he does. Hey, 
Hey. So again, on Wednesday nights, we've been talking about landmarks and boundaries found in God's words. These are the standards that the Lord has relayed to us in these days that we, for some reason, can't quite grasp, and I'm not sure why. Let's say that in a test, God brings in a divine help. But instead of praising God and worship him, worshiping him, we take up the idols of the thing that we got to feed over, rejecting the one true God, just like Amaziah. Instead of being all excited and praising God, what happens? We begin to worship the idols of the things that were defeated. See? Rejecting the one true God, this was the problem of Amaziah. He walked in perfidy of the Lord. Now, perfidy means a deliberate act of betrayal and treachery. Deliberately. I know this is hard to believe, but we see this in amazing acts today. There is deliberate acts of betrayal and treachery. We take the advice that God gives us through someone he sends, and then instead of listening to the divine warning, we show our arrogance, which reveals a heart of pride. Think about this. A warning is sent, and then in our arrogance, we interrupt the messenger. We interrupt the messenger, who's what? Bringing the word of God. Because God's word isn't important enough for us to pay attention to. Instead, we got to make stupid noises. We got to do dumb things. We got to ah, we got to interrupt. You know, that's a that's a prideful spirit, which is straight from the pit of hell. Because it it distracts and separates and cuts off the anointing. Just like that. That's what happens. It happened then, it happens today, all the time. So we interrupt the messenger while we interrupt God who loves us so much that he sends his word and we mock him and refuse to listen. Mock him and refuse to listen. And then we wonder why we're standing in a vat of crap and go, what's wrong with this picture? Are you that ignorant to know that because you didn't want to listen to God, this is why you're standing in that big bowl of stew of poo? <laughs> stew of poo. Honestly, because we've cut off God. We've broken the anointing, and the enemy's going, All right, I got you. Yeah, yeah. See, that's what that dual mindedness does for you. Amaziah lived in this fashion, and so do we. And when the time came, what happened to Amaziah? A defined defeat. A divine defeat came. God said, I'm done with you. Here's what's going to happen. We're done. Why? Because of an alienation of himself as well as his people. There's going to be a day where people are going to stand before God. And the person that was supposed to teach them what God had to say alienated them from having a divine understanding and the spiritual insight into God's word. That day is going to come. And when that day comes, will you be able to stand there and say, well, Lord, yep. Or will you be able to say, Lord, this is why I did what I did. Because you told me through messages, you told me through the word that this is how I was supposed to be. And I followed that example. <coughs> the Lord called Jesus. This is what you must do. And Jesus followed the example of the Father. He listened and stepped forward in the word and had a single thought to go to the cross. Not for, not for the Father, but for us. And that single thought became our salvation. Because all we have to do is accept what he did. Amaziah didn't accept what God had for him. He decided to go do something totally opposite. He decided to worship all the false gods 
in the captivity of the people that he brought. He, brought, he was told to end them all. And he brought back to gods. And those gods became his downfall. Are you today going to let the false gods and idols be your downfall? Saints. Or are you going to rise up and say, Lord, you're the way. Father, we thank you for this message, Lord Jesus. Father, again, learning some pretty cool kings about the, things about the kings. Learning some amazing things about the things you do. And so, Father, as we, uh, as we just come before you, Lord Jesus, Father, we are grateful. We are grateful that there's always somebody, Father, that comes before you and gives us a warning, Father, before the test. Because, Lord, you have said in the word, tests, tests are coming. How are you going to act through the test? Are you going to withdraw or are you going to draw in? Again, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Now, maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and maybe you've lived like Amaziah, and you've worshipped false idols and all this other stuff, and you know, you're wondering why things are going the way they are. Well, again, he turned from God. The Bible says that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That he became the final sacrifice. And all we have to do is receive the gift. The sacrificial gift of unconditional love. And so there's a prayer. I prayed it many years ago. And it goes like this. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. I want to repent of what I've done, Father. So Lord, I'm coming before you and, I, and I'm just you know, saying, Lord, I was a pots and whatever else, Father. And Lord, I just want to bring it before you. Redeem my life, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart and save me, Father. Wash me clean. Wash me clean, Lord. And Father, transform me. Which means you've got to give up who you are and receive who he is. And the robe of righteousness that comes through the sacrificial blood of the Lamb. Lord Jesus, transform me. And sanctify me, Father. Reveal the plan that you have for my life. Now, if you said that prayer, you only got to say it once. You only got to say it once. But if that was your prayer, I just need you to raise your hand real quick and put it back down. It's a confession to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you received Christ, if you said that prayer, I just want you to just raise your hand up because I like to pray. I like to pray for people. It's what I do. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. Father, that teaches us how not to do things. We thank you for your mercy, Father, that takes away the complete punishment of the sin. But Father, we thank you for your son who died on that cross for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. We love you and praise you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. These guys are going to sing, then I'll come up.
Father, we love you and praise you, and all God's people said, 